black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah, fuck with me. Yo, what up? You could live well, stay true. What is going on, you guys? Back with a breakfast mukbang. This is from my local Asian family just down the street. They own a uh, diner place that does all-day breakfast, and they do, uh, obviously, Chinese food as well, and uh, a few other sort of Greek things. It's just like a mishmash of everything, and it's like you can always count on it to be cheap, delicious. It's got that diner quality, and just like the, the price point is sick. It's always on point. The little Asian lady that works there, the mom, is, like, so cute. Like, I don't know, she's just, like, so nice and, like, friendly. And I just, I don't know, I, I love going and getting food there. So I have a breakfast. I got four eggs, you know, bacon, the toast, the home fries with a little uh, green pepper and onion. And then I also sprung for a also sick wrap job. Like such an ill wrap job on that sandwich, but um, a chicken club sandwich as well. So it's a lot of food. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Probably the chicken in my case. I'm probably gonna snap into that real quick and then get into these eggs and stuff. But yeah, I was craving a little breakfast. Was too lazy myself to make it. So I was like, honestly, I can go get it for like, the breakfast is six bucks. The sandwich was like four or five bucks. It's like, altogether it was like 12, 13 dollars. I think it's a pretty good deal for 12, 13 bucks. So let's move this toast out of the way. Get on in here a little bit. I'm going to unwrap this sandy, see what kind of treasures lay inside. You know what this feels like to me? This feels like, um, this is on like some grandma shit, like my grandma, like back in the day when uh, the grandma or the wall, the wife would pack pack the, the, the man his lunch in his, uh, like for his lunch pail or whatever, and it was like neatly wrapped in like this type of paper. I'm into it. Damn, that's looking fucking proper. So sick. Wow, that looks really good. So get rid of the diaper. Oh yeah, that looks great. Highly, highly impressed. Let's go in for a bite. Wow, what a great club sandwich. The craziest thing is <clears throat> I actually had no idea, like I'd never tried this from there. And I had no idea it would be this good. I have found myself a new local club sandwich because I'm super picky about my club sandwiches and that shit's banging. So we got the crispy bacons here. I don't know if you can see that, all those eggs in there. So I have a little bit of a a little bit of a tale to tell you guys. Um, I did my first ever audition for like an acting role. So randomly. Uh, it did not happen from like this channel or anything. I was cruising through. Uh, I was on Facebook. Also, I'm just one of these guys who just squirts ketchup all over their breakfast. So... Don't mind me. So yeah, I was cruising through Facebook and I saw this like uh, casting ad for in search of uh, male between like 25 and 40 who has restaurant experience and uh, 
could potentially be the host of a four-part web series. called restaurant hacks or something to do with restaurant hacks so essentially the role it was like he's a hip young restaurateur uh he's sarcastic funny a little bit jaded and cool without trying um He's seen it all in, in the service industry. And now he wants to help enlighten you for your trials and tribulations, essentially. So, I'm like, yeah, I can fuck with this role. It sounds like something I could get into. So I, um, I applied. And they got back to me within a day. And I like referenced my YouTube channel and stuff. And they're like, hey, we want you to come in for an interview. And this was like two days before the interview. So like they sent me like the, the script. So I practiced for like a few hours one day, got my lines down, no problem. Like I got a memory like that. Obviously, like, making music, rapping and shit. I've trained my brain to be able to memorize lines. So I get all prepared, and I'm killing it, like, in my head. Like, I felt confident. Going into it, I'm like, what do I got to lose? Like, obviously, whatever. It's like, who cares what happens kind of thing. So. I've never been to a casting or anything, right? Like. I've just never been in one of those scenarios. I don't know what it's like. <clears throat> I don't know how many people are going to be there. Who's who's watching? Like how many cameras? That kind of thing. You know what I mean? So completely new climate for me. So I head there. Go in. And, like, I could see, like, the other guys, like, the other competition. And what I should have done was got there a little bit ahead of time and, like, felt out the environment. Kind of, like, got a little walk around, maybe see what's going on and just kind of gauge the situation a little bit. But I didn't. And I showed up, like, I pretty much walked in. exactly when I was supposed to like go in for my audition so the guy at the front desk he like took a picture of me and then he like put me like on deck essentially so he brought me over to the room I was going to be going into and like on the way to the room I saw these other rooms with like, like <clears throat> all these people in them, like watching these other people do their part, like acting and shit and like all these cameras. And I was like, whoa, that's a little intense. If you can hear an annoying uh, cement saw, that's because this construction is just the worst. So, like, I'm on deck. Waiting outside this room. 
I haven't even had like a minute to take in anything. Like I just was ushered over here and I'm basically like up to bat next. And all my confidence that I had coming in just disintegrated into nothing. And now it's just like, all of a sudden I was like trying to go over the lines again. And like, if you've ever been in a situation like that at all, like you had, you had it down, it was all good. You start feeling yourself like blanking. You're like, what the fuck? So I had like one second to like, I literally stood out there for like a minute. And the dude who was ahead of me like pops out and he's like, oh, he's like, he like walks by me. He's like, good luck, man. And then right at that moment, an, a girl walked out from another room and he's like, oh, hey, what's up? Like, I haven't seen you in such a long time. Like, how are you? So you can tell that this guy is clearly like, and oh, I overheard her say like, she's like, oh, what are you here for today? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm casting for this today. So I'm like, clearly this dude is like a seasoned vet. Like he's probably here like every other week. Auditioning for parts. Cause he's like actually trying to be an actor and uh in my head i'm just like how the fuck am i supposed to follow that guy like <clears throat> he's probably got rapport with the people he was just like being filmed or judged by you know what i mean like this guy's just a staple in the community and so, like, that didn't help at all. And then, uh, so I get pulled into the room. And, uh, it's very intimate. Like, not the not very big room. It's just, like, a small room. There's the guy who brought me in. Three ladies in the back and the camera dudes. So there's, like, four people watching me. And, like, I just had no idea how this shit works. Like, I don't know the protocol of, like, when you get in there, you have to, like, stand and then you have to, like, state your name to the camera. And then they ask you, like, why you'd be a good fit for the role. And then, like, I kind of said something about YouTube and the f and whatever, like... And then they're and they're like, oh, like why do people come to your YouTube? And I had to like explain like why they came to my YouTube. But in the moment, I was just so like not ready for these questions that just my answers were so like unenthusiastic and like off the cuff, shitty and like not fun. Like I just wasn't in the right headspace. I just kind of was blurting out anything that like came to my head and it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't organically very cool sounding. So they're like, all right, well, you're just going to stand on that mark there and look at the camera and like, we're ready when you are. And in that moment, I was so be rabbit at the shelter, like just he's choking. Like I knew what it was like to be be rabbit at the shelter in that moment. I was peering out into my audience of four, just like blanking. And just internalizing everything, just tripping out about the whole situation. <laughs> and I was just like, this is so weird in my head. I'm like, this feels so uncomfortable. And I, you know, I started, I got through the lines and shit real quick. I, 
I didn't execute it horribly, but I didn't. I just couldn't do it like the way that I had been doing it when I was kind of just by myself, like just like walking around my house. Got it done, got the fuck out of there. When I left that building, like, I had this intense feeling of like the biggest relief ever. It was like I was in this mode of just like freaking out. And when I got outside, I felt like I like successfully like evaded like a war torn country or something. Like I just felt so at peace. Like I was just like, oh, I'm so happy to be out of that room, just by myself, back in real life. It was super strange. And I never thought it would be that difficult. Like, I never thought it would be that intimidating or that crazy. So, on one hand, I know that you could probably get, obviously, with just like anything else, with practice and experience and exposure to something, you'll get better at it and get more comfortable. And it would eventually just become sort of normalized to you but what I will say is I got a peer into a world that I've never previously seen and know nothing about which is cool to me because you know that's a learning experience that's fine I think it's it, it allowed me to learn something new and see something and see a whole world that I don't know about and get a taste for if it would even be something that I'd be interested in. It also made me respect actors so much more. Because it's no joke. It's not easy. It's very intimidating. And it's very much like Like, I get how that might fuck people up. Like, people who, like, move to L.A. and there's addition, addition, and they don't get roles, and that's not going how they want. And, like, it's just, like, that rejection, or you're just being looked at as, like, it's, like, very superficial, or you're just a piece of meat, sort of, in a sense. Like, like a meat puppet of talent and they like they pick you and they decided that you're the one to do the thing and it's really strange so it was eye-opening in a few different ways certainly very interesting Nonetheless, it would have been circular on the part, but I know I didn't, but. It actually paid like it was four shoots over the course of a year, like randomly, quarterly almost. But per shoot, you paid a thousand bucks. So I would assume the shoot would only take, you know, maybe a day. So and the actual like concept of the show itself, I was like into. Because obviously I have worked in the restaurant industry for a long time now. I'm a foodie. I love food, all that shit. So very uh, I 
Very interesting. Would have been cool to get it, but oh well. Still cool to get like a look behind the curtain, you know? It just made me like I came home and I started watching like these like clips from like great clips from movies on YouTube. And just like having the realization that like every role that's ever filled in a movie, like down to a random interaction with some uh, like a tiny part that somebody like had to go into a room, like looking for old men to play scientist for like two scenes, you know? Not a major role, but like some old dude, like 20 old dudes went to a building, stood in front of a camera and in front of these people and they deciphered like, that guy's the best old scientist. We need him for the role. Like every single role gets casted for, you know, it's just, it's, it was just crazy. That, like, I, I never thought about that before. It's like, it seems obvious and like you would know, but Look in the back of your mind, you know, but you don't think about it. But now that I went and did that, I'm like, oh yeah, like every single person has been hand selected for their, like, could be the tiniest part. And at some point they had to go in a room and like do that. It's just strange. <clears throat> All right, well, yeah, that concludes that. I have a couple soggy pieces of toast left, but I can't get them in me. I'm full. So, till the next one, eat good, live well, stay true. And next video should be the Q&A. So, stay tuned. Love y'all. Peace.